It's time, ladies and gentlemen, to make a video that I want to make and really want to discuss. So, yeah, you guys read the title and saw the thumbnail. You know, the thumbnail, they gave it away for you guys, you know. You know what you get yourself into. So, yeah, let's begin. And hello, I'm Chris. Chris Walker, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. Uh, I'm definitely a gamer. This gaming cha I'm a gaming channel, of course, doing all type of stuff. Yada yada yada. You can see you saw my Kalako videos, so let's talk about you know Resident Evil Village. And what I'm about to say is something that is kinda of, I would say kind of factual in some uh, factual in some way. But to me, this is my own, you know, opinion on the game. And how I think it is. I think that this game has been overhyped and probably I would say overrated. The problem is, you know, why this game is overhyped? Why is this game overrated? Okay, why is the game overhyped? Is it because the graphics of the game looks good? No. Is it because the story? No. Is it the main character, Ethan Winters? No. I mean, who the fuck cares about Ethan Winters anyway? We'll get we'll get to him later, but we'll get to him later. So, uh, what about Chris Redfield? Yeah, you know? No? So what is it? It's only one character, and you all know exactly what I'm going through. Lady Dimitrescu. Alcina Dimitrescu. I guarantee you, when people saw the very first trailer, or the reveal trailer of Resident Evil, set, uh, Resident Evil Village, me and sometimes some of the majority of the people said they won't buy the game. Yeah, they won't buy it. I guarantee people won't buy it. And then as soon as the second trailer hopped in, when Lady Dimitrescu came in, people were going out of control, and the game became from something that huh, no one gives a fuck about to something that everyone's waiting for for some reason. This character, like, this character, I don't really want to say character because she doesn't have any character or resembles a personality, to be honest. Suddenly, Resident Evil turned into from a a survival horror slash horror a survival horror genre that you know is about scaring, you know, resource management, all that stuff, to a literal at this point to a goddamn I don't know a goddamn S and M fucking session. Like, what the fuck is this? This character is not original, mind you. She's not original. She's a, oh, she's a vampire lady. She's not original. She's basically a female version of Mr. X with Freddy Krueger claws and hat. Like, she's trying to be like Freddy Krueger mixed with Mr. X, and it's a terrible combination. Okay, when Mr. X first came in in Resident Evil 2 Remake, he was terrifying. I'm still feeling anxiety and like feel anxious every time he appears. Every time he appears and you hear his footsteps, you never know he could be around the corner. Maybe he's around the neck, the room we're about to go. He probably when you open the door, he's probably there right in front of you, ready to punch you in the face and beat the shit out of you. And he's scary and terrifying. Then we get the Nemesis, which is basically a poor excuse. And keep in mind that the Nemesis Tyrant are normally intelligent. They're more smarter and more intelligent than tyrants. But in the remake, they're just basically just another generic monster. Just a generic enemy BOW. That's it. Just generic, just one grenade and then that's it. He's not the scariest thing. He's just a joke. Like the whole Resident Evil 3 remake. Then you got Alcina Dimitrescu. A character that's really just there for just a sex appeal. That's basically the, the thing is. And uh, this character... You cannot make this shit up and you tell me otherwise. She is the only reason why this game was nominated Game of the Year. You cannot. I swear to God, you cannot. You cannot tell me otherwise because of the story. Okay, the story is basically, if I could sum the story for you, it's basically Ethan Winters trying to find his daughter. Uh, because he you know, tried to, you know, uh, rescue his daughter from kidnap, from, from, you know, getting kidnapped. Sound familiar? Resident Evil 4. 
Resident 4 did that, did that pretty well. The story went well. Heck, the side characters in Resident Evil 4 are way more memorable than Resident Evil Village. I can guarantee you that. You got Louis Sarah, you got the Merchant, and you got Krauser? Man, these guys are fucking amazing. These characters are awesome. Sadler, uh, Batoris Mendez, Salazar, man, they're, they're awesome. I like these villains. They're quirky sometimes, but heck, they're pretty much memorable villains. I, people remember him. People remember these villains. But who fucking remembers... People... I mean, Heisenberg is badass. I know I like Heisenberg and all that kind of shit, but... Let's be real. The true star of this game is Lady Dimitrescu. That's the only reason why people play it. Even non-Resident Evil fans who never played Resident Evil game ever, never played Resident Evil, played the game just for her. I just cannot believe. Okay, as a casual, like just first time, I I can accept that. I have no problem. But as a long-time Resident Evil fan, and you tell her that she's the best female character. Out of all the female characters been in the last couple games, and you tell us she's the best, you need to get your head straight. You need to get your head straight because she will be will be relevant within a few years. Just give me like a two more years and one more year, and she'll be forgotten. I guarantee she'll be forgotten. It won't take long to be sure she'll be forgotten, basically. And. That game does not deserve to be nominated for Game of the Year. If it won Game of the Year, I guarantee you that this is, this is terrible and it's shit. That this game won Game of the Year award will be the worst thing. It was the worst decision, but thank God they didn't. Thank God. I was going to be saying, oh, you got to be kidding. What this game good for? Being Game of the Year, the, the whole like ro or like game awards are just, piece, it's just crap and no one should give a shit about at all by the way, no one should give a shit and people should not take it seriously because probably some of you people are fucking dumb enough to actually take it seriously for some people, so people sometimes are dumb as shit but anyway, I digress let's continue on let's talk about Ethan Winter's death I want to talk about this because this is by far one of the things that people tell me that people cry, people who are Resident Evil fans who play the other Resident Evil games Tell me that his death is the most emotional death. What? How the fuck did this character has an emotional death? Like, oh, because he saved his daughter, because he's protected, he's being a dad. Everyone can do that. Everybody can do that shit. His death, they showed me a tear because Ethan Winters. Ethan Winters is like a, a soggy, out of date, milk. There's no one uses, by the way. He's like a soggy fucking milk. That's what he is. He's terrible. He's shit. He's garbage. And his death is just, it's just, I just shed a single tear because he has no personality, nothing, nothing to offer. You have to, in this game, Capcom tries way too fucking hard to feel sympathized with him, but fail. It fails. I guarantee, because I guarantee you Capcom is like Well, well people don't like Ethan Winters, people hate him What should we do guys? You know, how about at the ending? Let's give him a plot twist to say like, Hey, he survived because he was a molded the entire time So people should feel sympathy for him <laughs> Now people will like Ethan I gotta see through your bullshit Ethan's death didn't mean shit to me Doesn't mean nothing Let me tell you about a death scene a, a main character's death that felt impactful. Arthur Morgan, Red Dead Redemption 2. His death scene, his death was impactful. There is reason. The man was got, got tuberculosis. He doesn't have much time to live. When he got, we found out we got that, it was emotional. You feel sad. And you feel like oh, this guy's have much time left. He's about to die any moment. He could collapse at any moment. You feel scared, you feel genuine. And then he died like a hero. He died like a hero. The sunset rises up and he died like a freaking hero. And his final ride was such like the cherry on top. Was the cherry on top. It was perfectly executed. Without trying to just like to shove it down your throat. And tries to be. That's what good character is. Ethan is not. 
and heal that shit. Most people say, oh, why are you being heartless? Why are you so... Why is it? Because it's terrible. They try. They're trying way too hard. Can't you see? They're trying way too fucking hard. A lot of people say, you know, the next president can be about Rose. Rose is gone. The, 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 the freaking, um, the Winter's Family Chronicles is done. I will, don't, I don't want to see Rose in the character because I can, I just don't want anything involved with the Winter's family. Get them the fuck out of here. Get them the fuck out of the Resident Evil series. Get the fuck out of here. Just get out. Never to be seen again. Literally, when you feel emotional and like back to Arthur Morgan's death, like heck, even he has character, he has personality, he got character development. He has like layers upon layers upon layers. Even the side mission, the stranger missions, add more extra. It add more of his personality. Like it add more. Like for from I played Red Dead Redemption once. Red Dead Redemption Two story. Once, it made me like Arthur Morgan. Then Ethan Winters took two games. The first game he's basically a stale fucking character. And two is stale as well. The first two games. And I'm glad he's dead. I'm glad he's gone. I want to see him again. I want to hear him again. He's boring. Okay. Let me give you a perfect example of a character kind of a bit similar to him. But it makes up for other things. James Sunderland. Yes, James Sunderland. I know that James Sunderland is not the best fucking character, not best of personality, you know, as a character by its own. It's like, kind of like Ethan. But the thing about James Sunderland, this reasoning is explained. His reason explained. The symbolism. The side characters. He has more to offer. Heck, heck, let me show you one scene that he has a bit of a sense of humor. Let me show you that scene that he has such a bit of a sense of humor. This town is full of monsters. How can you sit there and eat pizza? So, like this scene right here is hilarious, it's funny, and I always chuckle at it every time. But you cannot tell me that the freaking like call myself a big one. <laughs> hey, I'm funny, I'm quirky. Man, it's just trying to be funny so badly. You're trying to be funny. You try to be funny so bad this is just it's terrible. It's fucking terrible. Just go just die. You just suck as a character. You you suck and you're terrible. You're being like mysterious for nothing. But we all we all saw what you look like. So you're not really that mysterious. Just just go die. No one cares about you. Anyways, back to this is, this is just showing you that this game is overhyped and the reason this game was like, you know, got good because of Lady Dimitrescu. That's the only fucking reason. You cannot say it's anything else. That's why you should not overhype a game for a fucking one character. And heck, guess what? She died within the first hour of the game. She's not been there since start to finish. You know what? We're not going to conclude the video yet. Let me tell you another, another thing. Resident Evil 7 and Resident Evil 8 had the same exact issue. It is repeating the same issue. Both of them have main villains that did nothing. They just sit there. It's like, final boss time. Can you go now? Fight the final boss. And it's like, okay. They appear like once or twice with no, nothing to happen. And there you go, you kill them. That's basically it. The final bosses are shit. Like literally. They're, they're definitely one of the, the like, like, I remember other glaring issues, I said it when I talked to myself about it, about the issue, but I kind of forgot, but this is one of the issues that I find like that's been repeated between both games. I just cannot believe that people prefer this game. I kind of bit much prefer, just a bit, tiny bit prefer 7 over 8 because 7 felt like a it felt like a resurrection the first segment is felt like you know like the classic Resident Evil game which is awesome like you know the mansion the puzzles and all that kind of stuff that's cool 
But Resident Evil Village is just it had nothing. It tries to be like Resident Evil 4, try to be just like RE4, or be a special successor to RE4. And you know the reason why Resident Evil like you know Village was there? It's because they wanted to put out Resident Evil 4 remake. That's what the fuck they do. That's the fuck the reason why they do it. <sighs> I think I ramble long enough. It's been right now 8 15 minutes I've been recording this audio and I'm just tired of it. Capcom, stop trying way too hard to make me like your fucking character. Stop trying way too fucking hard. You didn't used to do that back then. Back then, you don't make me forced to like a character. Like, heck, I like Dante, I like Virgil, I like, like, you know, Leon, Chris, like those characters without being forced. Compared to either being forced, shove it down your throat. <sighs> I know, I'm a big Capcom guy. I, I love a bunch of Capcom games. I mean, I love Capcom, one of my favorite companies. But some of the shit they've been doing with Resident Evil Village and with the Resident Evil series has been awful. Like, freaking having a Resident Evil game appear every fucking year. Doing this kind of ruins the spectrum. That's why Resident Evil 3 Remake fails. If the game was at least, if the game took at least two more years, instead of releasing in 20, like what, 2020? How about 2022, like this year or next year, I guarantee you the game will be a lot better. It'll be definitely a game worth picking up. But no, they have to fucking remove 60% of the game 60 to 70 percent of the game they cut down a lot of the content and put the 30 to 40 percent and just ship it out nobody gives a fuck like what in that is the main problem resident evil 3 remake could have been a great game but instead it's a steamy pile of goat shit and i recommend playing the original over the remake the original has more content than the remake that's fucking embarrassing compared to resident evil 2 has a lot of content replay value and all that kind of stuff. Resident Evil 3 has some replay value but it's not that much. You play like once on like let's just say on normal then you play on the Nightmare or Inferno and that's pretty much it. That's it. That's all you have to do. Done. The game is done. Oh my god. I can't to listen to their fucking fan base. They need to listen to. And by the way you know just off topic just off topic Stop crying and complaining just because Street Fighter 6 just came, you know, had like a 40 second trailer for Street Fighter 6 and you guys are so pissed off saying, Oh, where's no Resident Evil? Oh my god, it's Resident Evil. Where's Resident Evil 4? Where's, like, like, sh- shut up. Just shut up. We still have fucking E3 and TGA and Tokyo Game Show coming this summer. We have these two shows coming this summer. Like, don't you think that they say like, Oh, you know, it's actually pretty good that they have Street Fighter 6 instead of, you know, Resident Evil. Uh, it's just, sometimes the community are just a bunch of idiots, you know? Sometimes, you know? Sometimes I hate being in the community. They're like, just like Devil May Cry. The same fucking problem with Devil May Cry. Like, Resident Evil games always being shown at E3 every fucking year. Every single time they reveal a re- Capcom reveals a Resident Evil game always at a three, so you have to wait your ass until June. Wait your ass until June, until E3, so you can get the Resident Evil game you wanted. And please be Resident Evil Code Veronica, which is not gonna fucking happen because happen because Capcom all they care about is getting goddamn Resident Evil 4 remake. Cause that game sells a lot, of course. That's why the game that sells the most gets the most attention. The game that sells the less doesn't get a damn attention. That's why. The series is like franchises, sorry, like Dino Crisis and Mega Man is getting new games. Or is there any new games for these two franchises? Nope. There's nothing because they didn't give a shit. Oh, Dead Rising? Yeah, they fucked that shit out of the fucking park. Even though I'm not a a big fan of Dead Rising, I saw some cutscenes of Dead Rising 4 and they killed off their main character. And by the way, I see some of the cutscenes. The jokes are shit, by the way. You know, the jokes are absolutely dog shit and terrible. 
compared to Devil May Cry jokes, Devil May Cry jokes are better and way funnier than I can actually laugh compared to like Dead Rising jokes. That, that series is dead anyway. Who the fuck cares about that series? Uh, okay, this. I mentioned this on a Twitch stream before. I have no hatred. Does it if if I hate a character, if I dislike a character, doesn't mean I dislike the voice actor or the face model or any of that stupid shit that people some people try to be. I respect the voice actors. The like the little the voice actors and actresses and face models are really amazing. I don't know how Capcom get in touch with them. It's just amazing. It's just amazing. I know the majority of them are just Europeans, but just it's amazing. It's just fantastic. It's amazing. It's one thing. It's just oh my god. It's just I know this video's gonna be long as shit. I just look at the time right now. And actually I'm recording I'm recording this voice literally later. So just let you guys know. Anyway, back. Here's the thing that I just don't understand. If you guys like Ethan Winters in Resident Evil Village, what about Seven? It means you better like him in Seven. Oh, you don't like him in Seven? He does this have a personality? It's the same thing as Resident Evil Village. Like, I don't fucking get the appeal, man. I don't get the appeal of Ethan Winters. I, all of a sudden, he's a good character. All the fucking sudden, he's an amazing character. All of a sudden. No explanation. Nothing. Already is a good character. His, does he have anything? G guys, please tell me why Ethan is a good character. Tell me. Other than, like, you know, oh, because he saved his daughter from there, he makes him a very good character and very memorable. Anyone can fucking do that. Okay, then just so? That's all you got? That's not convincing enough. Give me something else. You got nothing. You got fucking nothing. I'm, I'm having a headache just talking about all this stuff with Resident Evil 8. It just shows how much not only just the game has been overhyped, but how the community reacts to like Dimitrescu and to Ethan's death. It's nothing sure than just other disgust. I'm sorry. I might sound like a fucked up person while saying all about all this stuff, but honestly, I have evidence that this, like, I literally, it, it, the evidence in the pudding. The evidence is there, but you guys just like, you know, saying, no way, yeah, we just eat it up. Yeah, we just eat it up, that's it. The proof is there, but y'all just, just don't, just, y'all just, just don't give a shit. Y'all just say, yeah, yeah, he's just a good character, he's amazing, you know, he's my favorite Resident Evil character. Yeah, fuck Chris, fuck, uh, I could tell you a mil, okay, give, tell me the difference between Wesker, Alba Wesker, and Ethan Winters. Which one's the better character? It's Wesker, of course. Wesker, he's a badass. He is definitely the main reason why, you know, he turns back on his teammates to release a tyrant. He responsible for the attack of Rockford Island and Co. Veronica. He tried to rule the world. He tries to spread Ouroboros all over the world. It's try he said he's trying to save the world, quote unquote, save the world in his own image, in his fucked up mind. And all that stuff. Ethan has nothing. Nothing redeemable to him. <sighs> I'm done. I'm, I'm done. I raved way too freaking much. I just have to just put my point out and just, I'm gonna, I just wanna talk about this. Just to. To really, really tell you what is the truth. I'm spitting facts. Like, I don't, like, I don't even care anymore. I, I'm just spitting facts. And here's the thing. Before I leave. Resident Evil 4 Remake is going to get remade. I know and all that shit. If they fuck up, I'm, I'm uh, mark my words. I'm telling you this right now. I'll mark my words. That I, I'm going to save this video. I'm going to save it to the watch later scene. And I'm going to keep this part of the footage for a later video. Like this part right here. If Resident Evil 4 Remake does not deliver 
and does is if it, if it fucks up on the number three, if they screw up and they decide to do something stupid, if they retcon a lot of shit and make it to their own like special bubble, all that kind of stuff, I'm done. I will make a video saying that I'm done playing any I'm done playing Capcom games any I'll basically will not play any future Capcom games I will not play Street Fighter 6 I will not buy Resident Evil 9 I will not buy Devil May Cry 6 anything that Capcom puts out I will never ever ever buy it if they fuck up Resident Evil 4 Remake if they fuck it up I'll play it and I'll stream it and I'll make a v I'll play as much as I can. If they fuck it up, I'm done. I had enough. I'm done because this is will show and I will say in a video that Capcom that is a big proof of Capcom not listening to y'all and to me and care about what's in the money. They care about is the amount of sales that their fucking games have. That's it. Goodbye. Done with this shit.